All right, before we leave behind some of the basics of viruses, we want to take a quick look at how viruses are cultured in the lab. It is a bit different from how we culture bacteria in the lab. Let's start with bacteriophage. These are the easiest viruses to cultivate in the lab. We can do it in a liquid culture like you see on the left, or you can do it on a plate as on the right. But keep in mind that the, the food source, if you will, the medium on which phage grow, is not something like LB auger. Uh, the medium on which they grow are is live cells. Right? So you need to actually uh, supply them with a, a bacterial culture that they can then infect. So let's say you've got a T-even phage like T2 <clears throat> and you want to grow it up. You add a little bit of inoculum to a turbid culture, a dense culture of E. coli. And in a matter of hours, they're going to undergo their, their life cycle multiple times, lice all the cells, the medium will turn clear rather than turbid, and you'll know that you've grown up uh, a population of phage. On the right, what you have is a lawn of bacteria. So let's say that these are E. coli uh, that have been uh, grown up on a lawn, and then on top of the lawn, the phage have been plated. And wherever a phage infected a single cell underwent its replication cycle and spread to other neighboring cells, you have sort of the reverse or maybe the inverse of a colony and we call these plaques. So you've got a region where the cells have all been lysed rather than cell growth. You've got cell lysis and that indicates a region where you have a high density of the phage. <clears throat> these can be picked with a loop or with a toothpick and transferred just in the same way we would handle a colony. So the phage are the simplest of the viruses to culture. <clears throat> but if we want to culture viruses that infect humans, um, we've got to get a little bit uh, a little bit more savvy because uh, as you can guess, viruses that infect humans aren't going to grow on an E. coli culture or a salmonella culture or a staph culture. We actually need animal tissues. And it turns out, of course, that the, many of the viruses that infect you and me aren't going to be able to f infect many of the different animals either. So there are limitations to this approach. But if it's a virus that will replicate inside uh, a laboratory animal like a guinea pig or a rat or a bunny, then we can in fact grow up those viruses within those animals in order to, uh, to build a population for uh, study, uh, but also for producing vaccines. So live animal hosts are one good option. Another option for human viruses are uh, fertilized eggs. Fertilized, embryonated means essentially the same thing. You've got a fertilized chicken egg, and as the, the chicken fetus begins to grow, multiple layers of tissue called membranes surround it. Now, don't confuse the membranes of a chicken egg with what we've learned to be membranes of a, a phospholipid bilayer in a cell or uh, an LPS um, uh, type layer in a, a gram negative. These are completely different structures, but <clears throat> these are actual tissues. But these membranes, these tissues we call membranes, all display different carbohydrates on their surfaces and, and possibly even some different proteins that make them good targets for growing up at least some of the viruses that infect you and me. And so we often use embryonated chicken eggs for, for preparing virus for vaccines. Uh, the MMR uh, vaccine is prepared in chicken eggs. The influenza virus is typically prepared in chicken eggs. And it's this process of removing the virus after they've grown and purifying away the virus from any other contaminants that uh, leads us to, to need to watch out for folks who have, um, who have egg allergies because some of the egg protein will often come along with the virus. And even after purification, it may still be there. And if someone has a, a real strong sensitivity to those proteins, then injecting them with, um, with the attenuated virus is very likely going to cause an anaphylactic or at least some sort of reaction. So we've got live animal hosts, we have embryonated eggs, <clears throat> and then we have cell cultures, also called tissue cultures. It's not as easy to culture human cells as it is to culture bacterial cells, but the principles are very similar. You give it a food source and you inoculate and you let them grow. Often after just a few rounds of division, the growth peters out, so it's hard to get real high densities. They can get contaminated very easily. Take some high-tech space, lab space, and some high-tech equipment. And so this is a really expensive approach 
to culturing uh, viruses, and it tends to be limited just to research labs where you're working on a very small scale. You wouldn't scale up to, uh, for example, prepare vaccines for hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of people using cell culture. We need a, a much um, a much cheaper and simpler way to do that, and that's where the embryonated eggs uh, often come in handy. So these are the different approaches that we can use to culture viruses in the lab, and uh, I hope you had a, a, a good time learning all about it.